is just the cutest bench. You know what? This was a super fun one that I was able to do. Now, this was actually my daughter's bed. She had this lovely sleigh bed that I really liked, but mm -hmm. her cousin came over, like 200 yeah. pounds, six foot tall, 14 year old boy, decided <laughs> to, to jump on it, flop <laughs> on her bed after picking her up. So, oh, so we've got 300 pounds right. landing on the bed. <laughs> right, right. And not an easy land. Yeah. So needless to say, the bed did not survive, but the bench was born. Yes. And I, I love it. So I hope that you guys can watch this tutorial and learn what you two can do if one of your kids breaks their sleigh bed. <laughs> The first step for, for putting this bed bench together is to take the bed completely apart. Right, you've gotta get all your parts. Right, right, so we've got the headboard, which we don't do anything with, but the footboard, that's the one that we had to cut in half. Mm -hmm. Now for me, I felt like cutting it in half, it made the bench too deep. Right, you and know? for short people like me, that's a big deal. Right. When you can't, you know, your little legs are like sticking You're out You're slouching straight. funny, yeah. yeah, no, it's not nice. So figure out exactly how deep you want yours. I, I think I went for about a foot. Mm, that's a good distance. And initially what I did is is use the circular saw to just cut out a center segment. Mm -hmm. How'd that work for you? <laughs> it, it didn't work super great. So try <laughs> cutting a straight line on a curved piece of wood, you know. <laughs> Not so nice. Not so fun. <laughs> no, no. So then what I did is I pulled out the table saw and mm -hmm. I was able to use the fence to kind of help me get it nice help and it. straight and I just trimmed it down a little bit and, and got my straight line. And it probably still wasn't the easiest thing to do. No, no. But that doesn't even compare <laughs> to the notch that I had to put in the decorative portion oh, so that it no. would match up with the headboard and then down on the bottom as well. Right. You'll see later on. It, it's like it's a perfect fit. In fact, my husband oh, was job. really impressed. He's impressed, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You kind of rocked it out of the park. <laughs> I was super excited that it worked out so well because it's not always the case. <laughs> oh, no, certainly not. The first thing I needed to build a box. Right. We got to have something to sit on. Right. This is the frame. So mm -hmm. I build my box and then I attach the box to the headboard and then I have to make sure that everything works. And so I put in the sides, I, I, I put on the front. The front portion is, is just the side, the one that hadn't broken. Right. You know? mm -hmm. and, and I just cut the ends off that normally went into the bed itself so that it would cover the board okay. that I had in there. Just so that it looked good, you know, and kind of matched the rest of it. When I was putting the frame on the back, it wasn't really that bad because the back is sitting on mm -hmm. the ground. I did my pilot holes because that's always a good idea when you're doing right. reclaimed wood. It's and easier to screw into when it's laying down yeah, like that. Yeah, you have something to press against. But then when it came time to put the sides on, I was kind of nervous. I wanted to make sure it was nice and level and that it was straight and, mm -hmm. and that those decorative pieces were all lined Flush. up properly, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so we lifted it up. I just about broke my back because oh, everything no. was falling on me, you know, because it's really top heavy. Right, you know? right. So I that pulled my sense. son in yep. and, and he helped me to hold it. And so then I was able to get the top part of the sides put in. But when it came to putting the frame on mm -hmm. itself, I didn't feel like I could really hold it in tight. Right. It wasn't, it kept like popping out. It wasn't flush up against each other. Right. There. It wouldn't really suck in. And, mm -hmm. and that's ideally what you want. Well, it looks like you found a good solution to that with those clamps. I did. And, you know, with a clamp, you're kind of limited to how far they can open up. So what mm -hmm. I did is I used two different ones and connected them to each other. Nice. And then had them suck in the sides so that I could get it nice and tight to that frame there. And then, of course, after that, it was just a matter of putting that sideboard over, over the front. front. Right. Whenever you're doing a building project like this, it's a really good idea to caulk the edges. It kind of finishes it out. Otherwise, you have this weird little void where the paint will go mm -hmm. in, and it'll just kind of crack there and look weird. Nobody um, wants a weird-looking bench. <laughs> no, no, of course not. If you're taking the time to do this, you may as well finish it off. Exactly. You know, it's a good idea to use gloves. I don't think I was that day. I just washed my hands really well afterwards. I think you go and get a glove, see that you just put one on. Oh, yeah, you're you right. You didn't I have did. one initially, and then you put added one. That's right, because it is a good idea. I ended up using my finger to smooth it out. Mm -hmm. You, They have tools for it, but it worked well this way. Looks like now it's time for painting. Did you primer this one? 
No, we didn't primer this one. I just went ahead and did the coats of paint, which was fabulous. I was using the chalk paint again. Mm -hmm. which, I love that chalk paint. Yes, yes. This was the first time that I had used it, and it covers stuff so well. It did end up needing about three coats of it, though. Right. Well, and the underwood is so much mm -hmm. darker, and so that makes sense. Right, right. But it has such a lovely result that it's totally worth it. Now, mm -hmm. I do want to say that in between coats, it tells you to wait for two hours. Wait for those two hours. If you try to do it beforehand, it'll actually moisten up the previous coats, and it'll start to come Slide. off. Slide, yeah. yeah. So it's just not worth it. So set a timer, wait your two hours, do your next coat. Looks like it's about time to do the distressing. You know, I just love the look of distressed projects. I do too. I feel like it adds a little bit of dimension to mm -hmm. them more than anything else. You know, you, you've you got all the all the different levels of wood there and, and it kind of makes it pop. It really does. Now, I'm doing it by hand <laughs> and I don't recommend it. Well, especially with all of the detail from right? the bed, you know, with all the, the ornateness of it. And then you went and you hand did all of that. I <laughs> You should have got yourself a little mouse sander. Oh, right. So I used to have a little mouse sander that I would use all the time. Mm -hmm. and uh, But it broke because I used it all the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so I thought, oh, I'll just do it by hand. It'll be no big deal. By the time I got done with this, I was like, okay, I'm going and I'm buying another one. And I did, when I went and I did the... Uh, the door, the privacy right. screens? Yeah, we have a, a bifold doors that we made into a privacy screen. And by that point, I had I had bought right. the mouse sander for that. So if so you want to see idea. how one of those works, go ahead and check out that other video. But the big thing is, you just want to make sure that at any of the corners or edges... Um, or decorative areas that you're right. taking off some of the paint because what you want to see is some of the previous colors showing through mm -hmm. it you know it gives it that distressed look right so. it's gorgeous I love it for the seat of my bench I found some old uh, flooring boards we we had replaced our flooring a while ago and it was like Brazilian cherry wood or something yeah. like that which was super great when we had it. I love that contrasting color of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and just the the red with the white, you know, it, it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and then all I did is is I ripped the last one to make it so that it fit appropriately mm -hmm. and, and uh, nailed them all down with the finishing nailer. Well, then it looks like you just took some stain and went through and touched up any of the scratches or nail holes, right? Yeah, and this was nice because this was a gel, and so I really didn't have to worry about getting it on the white mm, at all. Right. I could just use it on those little spots that needed it. Really super convenient. Oh, and you know my favorite color is yellow, so that pillow is just too adorable. Right. Thanks for joining us today. You know, Marie has turned this lovely sleigh bed into a bench. My dad has done this with wrought iron beds or also with the poster beds. They, there's so many different choices and ways to do this, and we hope that this gave you an idea of how you can reuse that bed frame that you have. 